Hi stars, this is Luminous Star. Welcome to the channel. Today's video, the narcissist's successful Hoover depends on the formula of their love bombing. My stars, mwah, thank you guys and gals so much for motivating me as well as inspiring me to keep this channel active. Our channel is growing as you all can see, so I special shout out to my stars for making that happen. If this is your first time visiting Luminous Star, welcome to the channel. I also want to thank everyone in advance for his or her time. Check the description box below for further details to today's video. And please like and or share today's video. Should you become a part of our star family, don't forget to click the notification bell. That way every video and every vlog that comes out, you'll be the first to know. And of course, when I go on live, you'll be alerted and you can join us. Okay, topic number one. Narcissists and cluster personality types often recycle their romantic partners. Topic number two, the love bomb formula. The final topic are gonna to be the tools, references, and resources of which you can find in the description box below. Okay, so narcissists and cluster personalities, they often recycle their romantic partners. One of the reasons is because they wanna make sure they never run out of supply or narcissistic supply. So a lot of us already know how narcissists and cluster personality types, they will wait a little while before they approach you again or before they hoover you back in. Now one of the things that's very important to realize when it comes to the hoovering, narcissists and cluster personalities, they set things in motion or they set things up whereas they're already hoovering you back in before they actually hoover you back in. So how does the hoover go? All right, this is the first subtle way that they are hoovering you back in before they actually hoover you back in. And this is when they're coming up in conversation via their flying monkeys or other enablers of theirs. They're gonna be asking you something like, well, why did you all fall out? Or what's going on with you two? Why don't you go ahead and just kiss and make up already? The hoovering is a part of that. Okay, so what's going on is that the narcissist is orchestrating that whole thing. The narcissist and cluster B personality, they're hoovering you back in at that point before they actually have been successful in hoovering you back in. You've gone no contact. Let's just say you're not speaking to him or her. You haven't seen them in maybe 10 years. Let's shave it back to maybe three or five years. You haven't seen them. The bottom line is you're thriving forward. The narcissist and cluster personality, they pretty much know that. So they're setting things up to get that successful hoover. They will come up in conversation. So they will feel like they're still in your life and they're not in your life. When they come up in conversation over and over, you may start to second guess yourself. You may start to think, well, maybe it won't be so bad to talk to them for once. This is often a mistake. So let's just say you do give them that other chance. This may be the third or fourth time you're giving them the benefit of the doubt. They're going to come in very strongly. They're going to love bomb. Okay, so they're gonna have a particular formula for the love bomb. Every love bomb is not the same. And some of you have already grown to know this. The cluster personality and the narcissist, they're going to pick out which formula works for you. Because the formula they have used for another person to love bomb him or her is not necessarily gonna work for you. Picture the narcissist having a vending machine, okay? A vending machine of various types of fruit juices. There's apple, there's cherry, okay? You get the picture. They have all these types of flavors of fruit juices. One of them more than likely is your favorite. So he or she, the narcissist that is, they're gonna try to figure out which one you like, right? One of those flavors is your favorite and the narcissist wants to find out which one. This way, they'll have the right formula to love bomb you with. One of the ways to throw a curveball in the narcissist's plan to hoover you back in is to not want any flavor of juice that they have. One of the signs that you are done with a narcissist is that you are no longer wanting to be validated by him or her. You're not interested in what happened. 
You're not interested in the apology. You're not interested in the explanation. You're not checking for him or her. So no matter what their formula to love bomb you, it's not gonna work. Okay, having said all that, I wanna thank everyone for their time in advance once again. Stay tuned for the video. A successful hover depends on the narcissist's love bomb formula. Topics of discussion. Side note, you can find the links in the description box below for the references and resources. First point, narcissists and cluster B personality types like to keep narcissistic supply plentiful. To ensure that he or she never runs out of supply, they often recycle romantic partners. Secretly, he or she tends to fear that they will never be truly loved by anyone. Therefore, vow to never love anyone anymore for any reason. Cluster B personality types are notorious for leaving a string of broken romances behind, only to recycle them whenever another romance ends badly. Okay, so a lot of narcissists and cluster B personality types often like to keep their narcissistic supply plentiful. To ensure this, they will often recycle their romantic partners. Some of us don't like to rekindle relationships with our exes, especially if that relationship was very bad or it was toxic or dysfunctional. Now, some of us will rekindle relationships only if it was a positive relationship to begin with. Narcissists and cluster personality types, they often will recycle very bad romances. Now, I'm going to get into why they would do this, whereas most of us, we will go ahead and never return, or we will keep it moving from a bad relationship, hoping to get into a new relationship that is much more positive. Narcissists and cluster personality types, they don't do positive relationships to begin with. So this is one of the reasons why they don't have a problem recycling bad romances or a relationship whereas they did the partner wrong and the partner necessarily did not do them wrong. They often will still go back and recycle those relationships. Let's move forward. There are several things which consist of the narcissist cocktail of love bomb formula ensuring a successful hoover. The narcissist will use flying monkeys and enablers to bring them up in conversation with you. You haven't seen the narcissist in maybe a couple of years. Maybe it's been 20 years. But all of a sudden, the flying monkeys or the enablers will bring the narcissist up in conversation. So now you're thinking about him or her more often. Okay? Maybe you've never forgotten about them. But now, it's not helping you to think about them more when the narcissist has the flying monkeys and enablers bringing them up in conversation with you. They may ask you, whatever happened to you two? Or do you ever think about him or her? Okay, and then this is on purpose. The narcissist wants you to focus on him or her because they are preparing to re-enter your life. This is part of them hoovering you back in before they actually have hoovered you back in. The second sucker punch is, of course, when they have actually successfully hoovered you back in because now you are involved with each other once again. So the narcissist at this point has been successful in hoovering you back in by applying the right cocktail of the love bomb formula, therefore completing the recycle of the X. All right. Okay, so let's go right to the trauma bonding and toxic tie. So if you and the narcissist has something in common, such as childhood trauma, this is one way that you and your romantic partner, who is the narcissist or cluster B personality, to be trauma bonded or have a toxic tie with each other. Another thing I've heard of is the soul ties, which can be very toxic. But I want to go ahead and just focus on the trauma bonding or toxic tie. The narcissist and cluster B personality, they are more than likely going to be successful in hoovering you back in with that type of history. Because both of you more than likely have similar backgrounds in childhood trauma. 
One of the key signs of a codependent relationship with narcissists and close to personality is trauma, pardon me, childhood trauma. Deeply rooted in a codependent relationship is childhood trauma. The narcissist and close to personality may be denying that they have childhood trauma or maybe they don't have childhood trauma. More than likely, he or she has some sort of unresolved issue from their childhood. This is why they reenact that childhood in partnerships that are romantic. A lot of narcissists and close personalities, for whatever reason, they usually use the romantic partnership to reenact unresolved issues from their childhood. The unresolved relationship issue. This can be a number of conflicts that have happened during your partnership with the narcissist and cluster B personality type. The narcissist and cluster B personality, in order to ensure that they are more than likely successful with the Hoover, they will leave the relationship with those conflicts unresolved. They do it on purpose. This way, you're focused on what happened. You're wondering, why did they leave? You're wondering why they left the relationship so abruptly without resolving some conflicts, okay? So there's a lot of unanswered questions, and it may be years later, you may ponder and wonder, why did they abruptly leave the relationship? Triangulation. The narcissist and cluster personality, they love to use triangulation in order to hoover you back in. This goes right into you wondering why they did some of the things that they did. The narcissist and cluster personality is hoping that you are still focused on, no, no matter how long it's been, they are hoping that you still are focused on unanswered questions, such as why they two-timed you. They were involved with maybe somebody else and you at the same time. The narcissist and cluster personality, they never answered any of your concerns. So it can be years later. It can be six months, you know, a few months later, or like I said, a year, two years, or more. They leave questions unanswered on purpose. Flying monkeys and enablers, we went over that already. They are more than likely to use them in order to hoover you back in. Sour ending. What the narcissist and cluster personality does here is they will leave questions and concerns unanswered and they will abruptly leave the relationship, leaving you in a tailspin and dazed because you're hurting, your heart has been broken, and you have unanswered questions and or concerns. You're left picking up the pieces. So the narcissist abruptly ends the relationship with you, leaving it on a negative note. A negative note could be that you got into a bad argument. Next thing you know, you're getting the silent treatment. And the narcissist may be doing the smear campaigning at this time. So you're very confused. You're hurt. You're angry. And you have unanswered questions and or concerns. So this will leave you picking up the pieces. And more than likely, you're going to feel like the rug has been pulled out from up under you. So, of course, you're going to see this as unfair, and you're going to feel and or think something about it. The narcissist actually hopes that this is the case. Normally, a person will want to end the relationship at least on a halfway decent note. Not so with the narcissist and cluster personality. They often intend to leave the relationship on a very negative note. This way, you're pondering and wondering what happened. You feel badly. The narcissist wants you to focus on that. So the narcissist usually ends their relationships on a sour note. So you may be desiring to end things on a positive note or to at least come to peace with each other. The narcissist and cluster personality is totally against that because it doesn't supply them and it does not help them to hoover you back in. As long as you think and feel that you need the narcissist for closure, they're going to hoover you back in. Possibly, possibly hoover you back in. Sometimes they never come back to hoover you back in. 
However, in most cases, narcissists and cluster personality, they often wait a little while before they actually try to hoover you back in, especially if the narcissist left the relationship on a very sour note, such as you caught them in the act. You know, they were cheating on you and you caught them. And then they started to gaslight you. I don't want to get ahead, but this is where they can also start to gaslight you, making you believe that they did not mean to do what they did. And you may believe them only for them to turn around and do something else just as horrible and then leave the relationship. There may be some obsession on your part or their part or both of you. Social media. You may start to check the social media after they have gotten a new supply. You're curious. You want to know who the new supply is. The narcissist knows this. You may drive by their house a few times. They may drive by yours just to make sure you haven't started a new relationship with anyone. See, the narcissist and cluster personality, they may not want to do right by you, but they don't want you to be happy with anyone else once they have left the relationship. Because, more than likely, they're planning on hoovering you back in. And it can be five years down the road. Codependency. We went over that a little bit. Codependency is when both one or both partners are overly dependent on the other. Okay? So, if there's codependency, and say you're the one who behaves codependently, the narcissist and cluster personality, they are also overly dependent on you during the relationship. Once they get a new supply, they're getting the narcissist's supply from the new partner. However, they can still be planning a little bit down the road to hoover you back in once that relationship goes sour, which is, is probably going to be the case. Addiction. The narcissist and cluster personality is often addicted to emotional pain and many other things, such as alcohol, drugs, uh, food, sex, you name it, pornography. So they're more prone to become addicts or to be addicted to something or someone. Narcissists and cluster personality types are addicted to people. They are overly dependent upon people. For the narcissistic supply. Seduction. The narcissist and cluster personality, they're masters of seduction. They are often charismatic. They know how to put on the charm. So a lot of people who are love addicts or codependents, they're usually going to become addicted to the narcissist and cluster personality type, if not the very relationship with him or her. So once the narcissist puts on the charm, then a lot of those who behave codependently and those who are love addicts often are very intoxicated by the narcissist's seduction. This also ensures them to have a successful hoover if they decide to hoover you back in. Finally, gaslighting techniques the narcissist likes to play mind games. This is also a very important ingredient to formulize a love bomb if they should decide to hoover you back in. The narcissist has to be able to get into your mind. Once they get into your mind, they are sure to be able to get everything else from you that they want for narcissistic supply. If the narcissist decides to hoover an ex back in, he or she already knows they have to come in strong. If the narcissist knows your vices, your weaknesses, what you like, what you don't like, if he or she has mimicked you to hijack your very identity, when you cocktail all of that, it is going to make a strong formula for a love bomb. Let's move on. Tool number one. Remember, you never needed the narcissist or the cluster B personality for closure. You only desired him or her for anything at all. 99% of the romantic relationship with the cluster B personality types are mind games, 
shenanigans, and diabolical tactics for narcissistic supply. As long as the narcissist thinks that you think that you need him or her for anything, he or she will most likely use you as recycle and possible future Hoover. All right, so this is something to keep in mind because the narcissist and cluster personality, when you least expect him or her, they may attempt to pop back in your life. If they left things on a sour note, and more than likely they did, they're hoping that you still feel and think that you need him or her for closure, for validation, for explanation, for an apology, for why they conducted themselves as they did during your romantic relationship. All of those things are mind games, shenanigans, and diabolical tactics just to get more narcissistic supply from you. So remember... You never needed the narcissist. You only desired him or her for anything at all. All right, next tool. Take steps to recognize how full your life is without the narcissist and or cluster B personality. More than likely, your desire and thoughts of needing him or her is habitual and nothing more. Codependent relationships often influence feelings of uncertainty and dread leading to a state of anxiety. Codependent relationships are deeply rooted in addiction and childhood trauma. To study this chart here, please look in the description box below for the link. Ah, <laughs> all right, next two. Build and work your support base, making it a priority. Having a contrast of positive relationships with others while comparing the negative relationship with the narcissist and or cluster personality can help you place certain things into perspective, such as how you tend to do relationships. Continue to focus on what is necessary in order to thrive forward past narcissistic abuse. References and resources. Please check the description box below for the links for references and resources. Don't forget to check out the suggested videos to watch. Just click on any one of them or all of them. I'm Luminous Star, I wanna thank everybody for joining me today or tonight. Wherever you may be right now, I certainly hope you're being good to yourself and, and being patient with yourself as well. I want to go ahead and remind everyone, there are new videos that come out every Thursday and or every Sunday. Please don't forget to click the notification bell if you have become a new star in our family. Okay, I welcome you. I wish everyone the best love possible. 